Morning everyone, Eileen here. It's still a bit dark and dismal down here in North Kent, but I've got the light on and I'm going to go for it. And um, this is going to be the first of my two video tutorials today for Lavinia Stamps. I'm, as you can see, I'm doing tags today. The um, technique that I'm using is the same for both tags. So I'll tell you the colour scheme of this one first but then I will be demonstrating this one and obviously as the technique's the same then it's fine you'll be able to see what's going on now just in case you hear any background noises I've got uh, both ferrets at the moment that rescue ferrets that we have and they're down in my craft room sort of playing so if you hear any squeaking it's just Eric playing with his balls um, right moving on Moving on. <laughs> Shall I start again? No, no, I haven't got time. Uh, yeah, so this one. I'll tell you the colours of this one. Starting at... Uh, no, I didn't use that colour. Starting at the top of the tag, I used antique linen. In the middle of the tag, I used Victorian velvet colour I don't use very often but I just love it now and at the bottom of the tag I've used hickory smoke so that's the colour for the background of those um, along with dun, 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 the stamp oh sorry the archival ink in uh, blue this is cornflower blue which is a Wendy Vecchi signature colour uh, from Ranger and that's what I've used for stamping on this card uh, tag oh by the way the tag itself is not white it is a rangers manila tag and so you've got a sort of a creamy background to start with um i don't know how much that adds to how the color goes down but anyway it's a lovely smooth uh, substrate so that's what i've used today so just to recap there's cornflower blue for the stamping and then black for First fine clear nocturne for the uh, over the top stamping there that I've done and the little snail that I've used at the bottom I'll give you the name of the fairy uh, there she is and she is called Faith isn't she's absolutely beautiful isn't she so that's Faith nothing oh and I've also in the background I've used um, a stencil so I'll find that for you Now the stencil I believe on this one I've used is foliage, yeah, that's it, foliage. Uh, it's, uh, well, I love all the Lavinia stencils, but the floral ones in particular are, are particularly attractive. Now I know what you're going to do, you're going to say, where did you get that um, plastic sleeves? case to put your stencils in well it is if I can just get this in bear with me a moment whoops it's not easy to get in is it <laughs> it's only because I'm feeling uh, pressure at the moment because I want to get on today and do at least a couple of videos so that's that's it right it's in so this is and is ideal for the Lavinia stamp stencils this is an old recipe card, cooking recipe card folder that I got from uh, one of our large supermarkets over here in the UK. Um, and it, what it does, I'm not doing very well, it does stand up, look. Oops, just hit the camera. Allegedly so that you can have it standing up in your kitchen whilst you're doing the cooking. Now I can't cook. In fact, all of my dishes uh, have I uh, they really do have an identity crisis. I once burnt a jelly. So we won't say any more, but it's ideal for the stencils. Now, so that's the colours that I've used for that. Along with the moon and the uh, haze around the moon is again the cornflower blue. But I've applied it with one of the brushes rather than a smoothie 
or a blending tool and I'm finding that the haze around the moons that I'm doing now if I use the blending tools they're much softer and gentler and I don't get so much ink everywhere so if you haven't tried it, it might be worth a go now this is the tag that I'm going to show you how to do today so I'll best give you the colours for this and the stamp that I'm using Starting off from the bottom, I'm using aged mahogany. I'm using tattered rose for the top of the tag. And then picked raspberry for the middle. And obviously I've blended them all together. And then the moon is shaded again with these makeup brushes. And I use the aged mahogany so that I've still got the tone on tone going through the tag. The stamps that I've used are, ooh, 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 if I can find the names, I've used, I think this is called Rin, this one, which is an absolutely stunning, um, absolutely stunning uh, 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 stamp. And I can't find the actual name of her. No, I don't know where I put it. Ah, oh, but I do know what I have got. Oh, here, here it is. Oh dear, I'm not as so organised, am I? Rue. She's called Rue. And she's beautiful. And so uh, useful because she's quite a large stamp. And the other stamp that I've used here and here and on the other tag that I showed you earlier is called Flourish. And that matches the name of the stencil as well that I used on this tag. On this tag, I used the matching stencil to the stamp. And that is... Flourish. There it is. And that's what I'll be using to show you how I did the background. Okay, so let's go. I don't think I've missed anything out, but I can show you as I go along and you can leave me some comments and questions if you like, and we'll go on from there. Clear the decks. Underneath my um, mat at the moment, I've got a uh, stamping mat as well. I'm finding it's helping me with the blend rather than blending straight onto a hard craft uh, glass mat. I'm finding it's a softer surface. Give it a go. It will work or maybe not, but I'm finding it okay at the moment. And then taking one of the craft tags, Ranger's craft tags, size 8 these are. Uh, 6.25 inches by 3.25 inches. Six and a quarter by three and a quarter. Right. Popping that down. And I'm starting off with aged mahogany. Just going to turn it round on its side. And I'm getting another piece of copy paper so that it will protect oh we've got ink on it already there's a first <laughs> um it will protect the tag from my oily fingerprints so uh, just going to hold on to that i'm using the makeup brushes and i'm using the large size uh, this one really good ink up look loads on it and then starting from off the tag, I don't need that copy paper because I want the slickness of the mat to help me with the blend. Loads of ink. This pad isn't particularly wet. I've had it a long time, it's still okay. Don't worry about going up the tag. Just concentrate on getting a nice layer of ink 
and adding more layers of ink on the bottom so that you've got the depth of colour that you want. Look, loads. And make sure, don't just go swipe, go one, two, three, four, you know, and really load up the brush with, uh, with the ink. And it's Distress Ink, obviously. Now I'm going across, but I'm also going up the side because I don't want stripes. I want the blend to be um, uh, well, seamless. <laughs> well, that's the plan. <laughs> and stripes are sometimes very difficult to get rid of. So that is my first aged mahogany. I might need that in a moment. Then I'm going on to picked raspberry. This goes lovely with uh, aged mahogany. I found out by accident. I thought, oh, have some of that. Looking for my other makeup brush. There it is. Um, now this one's got AL on it because I used it for antique linen. But all you need to do to clean off any ink is to make sure that you get some textured kitchen towel and just rub off until you get the ink removed. I never wash them. Right, pick raspberry, load the brush and then just blend it in. This ink pad is a little wetter which is ideal for blending. Just keeping this edge away because otherwise if you get the edge down from the copy paper that's protecting your work or protecting your work from your fingers that's a devil of a job to get rid of so uh, be careful I'll put a nice big layer down like so going up the side a bit so that I haven't got a stripe and I can blend the other colour in not being too careful now I'm going back to aged mahogany I've got the right brush yep because I want to increase the amount of colour of this in the bottom. So really grinding it in now. Like so. And dum 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 dum. What's next? Oh yes, the last colour. Swinging it round. Tattered rose, really pretty pink. Love this one. And I want a cleaner brush. This had Victorian velvet on it, which is why it's got VV. <laughs> I'm quick. And uh, but I've cleaned this off already on my kitchen towel. I'll pop that in. Not a very wet pad this one. So we're going to have to work at this. Really grinding it into the card, and I'm one, two, three, four, loads of ink. Look, look, you can't overdo it, especially if the, the ink pad is a bit dry or a bit old, as we all get. But my ink pads are well loved, so at least I'm getting the use out of them. <laughs> now, pop those in there. Like so. A little bit more blending here on the top and I think that's good to go okay now that's not a bad blend but I want to reassure you that if your blending is really not that good on this part of the tag now don't fret because we're going to put or I'm going to put a stent the stencil on with a drop of water and that will take out any horrible blended lines that you've got so don't worry if it's, if it's not um, as smooth as this appears to be. It's just that I've been blending for a long, long time. It's like riding a bike. Once you've got the knack, it's fabulous. So this is the stencil that I'm using. It's Flourish. Now, there's something you need to be very careful of, um, and I will point it out and emphasise it as I go. But to start with... You're just moving your tag well out of the way. I'm just going to uh, wipe up with a damp cloth. My mat, that's a, a damp cloth. Clean that off, good. Pop that down. I need that cloth again in a moment. 
and I'm going to get the water and I'm just spraying the whole of my stencil with that and then making no, sure there are no ferrets in the vicinity, I'm flicking it all over the floor. So <laughs> it's got off all of the, um, uh, the residue of the water droplets, you know. So I don't want, I want it wet, but I don't want it dripping. Dry the mat, down onto the, uh, to the mat, and then turn your stencil over so the wet side is really going to make contact with your tag or card. Pop that down, get a clean piece of kitchen towel, pop it over the top, and then just blot it without moving it. Now, this is the important bit. When you lift this off, you will find that you've got, and I'm going to leave it a while because it, it will bleach. It will bleach. Don't move it or do anything like that. And when you do lift it off, you've got a lovely bleach pattern that will keep bleaching. And it's important, and this is the important bit, don't dry that with your kitchen towel because you'll get white splodgy marks where it's taken out too much of the pattern of the stencil. You, you must leave it, you must be patient, and then when you're ready and it's bleached enough and it's still working, it's still the pattern is still coming through. Can you see that? I'm gonna hold it up to the camera a bit more. Yeah, it's still working on that. It's still coming through. Light's terrible, I'm so sorry. It's not good at all. Um, so consequently, once you've got that lovely pattern, then get your heat gun and dry it. Don't blot it. Now we get the underside as well as the top part. Experiment with this part of it because the more water that you put on the more of bleaching effect you're going to get But you've got to sort of get the balance right between putting enough water on and To not putting too much on that you lose the definition of the pattern of the the uh, stencil you're using It's uh, it's not tricky, but you know, you just need to have a little bit of practice maybe So I'm happy there Way we go with that and onto the stamping and I'm using the uh, beautiful Rue she should be all ready there she is and there's fine Claire Nocturne loads of gentle tapping and a lot I mean a lot and this is a fairly new pad so it should be um, nice and juicy Gentle tapping all over, especially on her body as well. Really laying the ink on there. And then getting my damp cloth, I'm just popping it around the edges to make sure I haven't got... You can use a stamp press for this if you like. Just getting the surplus ink off that's landed on my block, around the edge of the stamp and my fingers right now I'm going to turn it on the side because I found that stamping large images on the side I've got more control so that they are straight and they don't go wonky and I'm going to stand up as well you haven't got the true colours of this as far as I can see which is a shame because it's much richer than it looks on there especially the tattered rose but we, we'll go with it. Down. Press. Let the ink soak into the tag. Oh, it's brightening up a bit out there. I might, uh, I'm going to do another video this afternoon for you. That might be better. I've got a daylight lamp, but unfortunately, 
I can't sort of control the shadows. I'm, I'm good with this video lark, but I'm not that good, you know. I'm not terribly sophisticated. <laughs> but I'm going to get some decent gear. I'm saving up to get some decent gear in. Now, okay. Pressing quite heavily now. And then lifting up. And there she is. And she's beautiful, isn't she? She's gorgeous. Okay. I don't think she needs any help from me. I think she's done all right. So not turn out of the way for the moment. And then I'm going to go on to uh, the foliage stamp. Now, what colour did I use for that? Oh, I used Nocturne uh, Black again. So, all right. Here it goes. Gentle tapping, not going to overdo this. I don't want to cover that background pattern that I've got with the stencil because I think it's pretty. So we'll put some down there. Yeah. Gentle tapping. Clean off my mat because I'm getting the ink everywhere. Down. and then I've done one more at the top and then I've sort of left it then because there's a few more bits to do but um, not in the stamping area so let's put a bit there I think down and up she looks pretty good doesn't she so let's display her I don't like displaying my work on a messy background, you know, because I don't think that you get uh, the, the right perspective. And I, I think also it sort of makes your artwork look horrible. <laughs> so uh, I like to show it off in the best. I mean, it, it's, it's work, although it's most enjoyable, but you want to, uh, to make sure people see it as its best. You've gone to all the effort to create it. So that's the basic stamping done. The final thing I'm going to do is to add some gold pen work and also the moon. Um, now on the original, look, on the original, I did a large moon and I think that's wrong. I don't like it, so I'm going to do a smaller moon on this one. And I have it here. It's just a, a plastic mask. And I'll pop her on, I'll pop the plastic mask on there. And taking one of the makeup brushes, quite large, but uh, actually that one's slightly smaller, but it's still a large one. And the um, Age Mahogany. Now this pad is not very wet. If it was, I'd take some of the ink off. But it isn't. So I'm just going for it. So starting off on the mask itself and then just coming out. And I'm finding doing these moons with these brushes is much more, um, what's the word, ethereal looking and more control over the amount of ink than I get with uh, a smoothie. Or a piece of cut and dry. Anyway, you have a go. See how you get on. See, that's it. Oh, now, I'm going to show you the two. What do you reckon? I think that the balance is better for the design on that one than it is on that one. She's sort of, that moon's too large. But anyway, your choice. Um, now, I'm going to take some pearl pen. This is from Pentart Pearl Pen. And it's a dimensional um, metallic uh, iridescency, actually, gold paint. And then I'm also using this lovely uh, pen from Lavinia Stamps. And this is a jelly roll pen called Clear Star. 
and it is so pretty. I'm sorry about the shadows. I, I can see shadows coming across this. So just around the moon. Bring that round like so. Now I'm minding my fingers because this ink isn't dry. So before you do this, recap, get your heat gun and dry all the ink off because it's coming out all over the side of my hand and I'm going to get it all over the card. I should have done that first. So sorry, dry off the ink. No harm done, but it could have been. <laughs> See, I get so carried away. There we go. Move it there. Now, I don't think you can see this very well, but um, it does look pretty, this little bit of glitter. It looks quite nice. Just highlights it a bit. And then uh, I'm, I'm using a gold pen, which is... This is a Uniball Signio pen, uh, gold uh, sparkle pen. And I, uh, I believe I got these, I'm sure I did actually, from Colt Pens in the UK. So, and I'm just going to, not being careful, look, just going to highlight some of these stenciled images in the background. Just pop in a few lines just to highlight them and bring them forward and just to make it look even more pretty. And the beauty of this is you can put the gold pen in areas where you haven't got any of the stenciled images so that you can add as much or as little as you like. Just down here in particular, there's a lot of the stenciled images that I'm, that I'm highlighting. Now I'm just going to pop that up so you can see it. Can you see that? Look. Oh, yeah, you can. Look, and, and the bit on the moon. Oh, that's not bad. Right, we're nearly there then. So with my Pentart Pearl Pen, don't shake this. A bit like glossy accents. Get lots of bubbles in otherwise. And uh, just take out a piece there. It flows so well. And there's a lot of it. and lasts for ages. I'm just going to, in a vertical position, try to keep out of the shadow of it, I'm just going to pop some pearls in. I have three there. Because this moon is smaller, I think that it, it probably would be better to uh, rein back on how many I'm going to do. Okay, and that, I think that's it. I'm uh, just going to get the original tag and the other one that I've done with all the colours as well. I don't think that I've forgotten anything, no. So, what do you think? I think they're pretty. So that's those two. And then this one. Here. Thank you for looking today, or thank you for looking this morning. I'll be back later this afternoon with another Lavinia Stamps tutorial. If I've forgotten to give you any names of the stamps or there's any other information that you'd like, please leave a comment on this uh, uh, video posting and um, at the bottom and I'll answer it thank you for all your support and the lovely comments you leave me are appreciated enjoy your Sunday Grand Prix today oh yes see you later bye for now